How about this? What is the feeling of finally getting it done? 49 races, June 23rd, 2019. That was the last time you got to celebrate one of these. How good does it feel to be back in victory lane? Ah, it's a relief, man. It's, it's been so many things for so long, and like, I do feel for Colton, I do, but I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> like, thank, thankfully, something came our way, and I just want to give a huge shout out to Andretti Autosport and their continued belief in Nap Auto Parts and Auto Nation. I'm so happy to drive pink and the Honda Power. Everything was, there's just been so much belief for so long, and it's nice to, to finally accomplish it. You're obviously switching teams next year to finish this year out and get a win with this group, this 27 team. Does that add a little extra specialness to this victory? Yeah, of course. I mean, there's still five races to go, a lot of really good tracks for us, but to kind of come back at Indianapolis um, at home is, is pretty amazing. You said all weekend that your race pace was, you thought, the best of anybody else here. Is that how you felt in the race? Did you feel like you were going to be good enough to go up there and race Colton if he didn't have problems? Yeah, I mean, I think I think he was definitely strong. Like, obviously, we ha we have pretty much the same race car, so it would have been interesting. Um, I don't want to take anything away from what he did from ninth to get to that position was was incredible. But um, it was the 27th turn, so that's awesome. Congratulations, thank you, Alexander Rossi. He's back in victory lane at Indianapolis. Kevin, hey, how about a, a late 21st birthday present just last week for Christian Lungard? Your first IndyCar podium. Does yeah. it feel a little bit like a win? It does for sure. Um, I think at the end of the this, the third stint, I was catching uh, Alex and I, I was really hoping because every pit stop we always caught up. We lost a bit in the beginning of the stint. I think the, the Andretti car just had so much better power down than we did today. I think that's what killed our rear tires and you, you know we struggled on the long run. But for sure it feels like a birthday present. Uh, I had one from Shield Cleansers in Iowa because my birthday was on, on the Saturday of Iowa last week. He gave me a, a trip to Vegas. Yeah, so uh, I'll be I'll be going. So this has to feel like a win for the team too. It has not gone as well as everyone hoped. Graham was having a good run today. What kind of progress is Ray Hall Letterman landing and making? I think the result speaks for itself, really. I think um, you know coming in this weekend, we knew we had a strong car. I wasn't so happy in practice. Um, I think there was definitely something to be found there. Uh, and then we roll into qualifying with my last year's car. Look where we are. And remember how strong you were last year, where you, on debut, qualified fourth. Is this a new home for you? Must be. It is my second home. I love to be in Indy. So, uh, for sure, you know, now to, to have a podium, and this this being the place, I would have preferred it now being the other way around, but uh, we'll take that next year. This impressive 21-year-old Dane is leading the Rookie Points Championship, and he comes home with the best result for any rookie this season, second putting a band together. I've got a drummer right here, Will Power, and I know Scott McLaughlin, his teammate, can join the band. He can be lead vocals as well. I'm going to talk to Scott first because he was a big mover on this day. To get to fourth, what do you make of that? Oh, pretty pumped. You know, we needed one of those, Kevin, and, and to get from 15th to fourth in a Gallagher Chevy, and the Gallagher Grand Prix was fantastic, you know, and the car was good. Chevy fuel mileage was good, and I'm, yeah, I was just pumped. I was trying to push this guy at the end. I'm like, come on, like, let's go. And I had a bit of a blister on my right front, but uh, he controlled it really well. And uh, just missing out on the podium, but you know, top five was a great day for us today. And Will, you're now the championship leader, as I'm sure you know. Fourth to third seems somewhat routine, but it was anything but. You were all the way back in 16th after the start of the race. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, definitely a rough start. Got pushed around in turn one, and got pushed into Pato, which spun him. Then Elio went for a big move and pushed me on the curb. But uh, great recovery, man! Like you, got, you, got, you, can, you can never, uh, Here it is. you can never expect a normal day in IndyCar. Here I'm like three wide, trying to be as good as I can. Here, it's like, oh my God. Yeah, you had some commentary about the driving uh, skills of, of those around you at that time. Yeah, oh yeah, it was just, oh man, it, it's not, it was just one of those things. It's. Everyone's very aggressive, and it's so hard to win in this series. It's the toughest series in the world. Like, so everyone fights hard for position, and just gotta gotta keep it clean. But great job by the Verizon 5G guys. I mean, it's uh, it's amazing that we can go all the way back there and then recover the third. I'm I'm so happy for that, and thanks to Chevy for great fuel mileage.
how are you feeling about the championship? You've won one before. You've come close so many other times. Yeah. You are leading the championship through your consistency this year. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, that was the goal from the very beginning was to play the long game, and we've been doing that. Uh, it's going to become a time here where we just, you know, I mean, we just, just got to do what you know. That's what I've been doing. I know this game so well, um, and I know I can change very quickly, but you got to take what you can get every day, every, every, every race day. So guys, uh, I know you're a NASCAR fan as well. You, you sit in the root on Team Penske now. There's nobody in the Xfinity race, but I'm sure you just become race fans the rest of the weekend, Scott. Oh yeah, I'm gonna go to my bus, hang out, probably crack a beer and, uh, and watch. So we'll watch the next episode of Bus Bros. It could be live commentary. Now you need to check with NBC. We have rights on that. Here's Dale, <laughs> Dale Earnhardt Jr. Marty started with a special guest. Yeah, I'm surrounded by Hall of Famers. You got Dale Jarrett, you got Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Jimmy Johnson, four-time Brickyard 400 winner and the perfect example of the crossover weekend here at Indianapolis. Terrific run for you, by the way, in the IndyCar. Thank you. On that all strategy, I mean, you were hanging out there for a long time. That had to be fun. Yeah, the caution, uh, a caution came, but not the one that we needed. <laughs> yeah, so. right. yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, caught us out, but um, where we were starting, we had to take a risk, and it seems like if I'm placed up there in the top five or top ten, I can stay there. It's just hard for me to qualify up there and, and or pass those cars to get to yeah. the front, but I'm, I'm building on it each and every week. So we know in stock cars, there's not a lot of adjustments making from inside the car, basically a brake adjustment uh, in the old days that when I was driving the cars anyway. But you've got a lot to do in there, especially, and we were just talking about this, the different sets of tires uh, make you have to make different adjustments for the car at this place. Yeah, the, the cockpit is really busy. Um, it's a six-speed gearbox. Um, I have different settings that can help with the power delivery on, on a rotary knob. Um, we also have different fuel settings and power mm. settings depending on where we are. Um, you have a front and rear roll bar for the car, you have a brake bias adjuster, and then on the ovals you also have um, a wedge adjustment that you can make. Uh, so it's a really busy cockpit um, wow. with a lot going on. Yeah, I'd have that all messed up. <laughs> Jimmy, I typically do. <laughs> we, we mentioned the crossover and you're the excellent guy to have out here to talk about that. And what is it like for the drivers? You've been in the NASCAR series and now in the IndyCar series. What is it like for the drivers to have like NASCAR drivers interested in IndyCar come sit on the boxes during practice and vice versa? Yeah, I think it's a great chance for our, you know these two awesome forms of motorsport to get together. I, I've been able to see the respect on both sides uh, from living in the NASCAR world and now being here in the IndyCar world. And to see everybody commingling and hanging out and looking at each other's stuff has been really cool. I did get a really good laugh, though, when we came out on our track walk uh, Thursday. The entire IndyCar field was waiting for me down at the braking zone of turn one, and there's an 800 marker. They have never seen one before. They're like, is this real? Like, yeah, okay. it's here for a reason. Now you're about 750 when you're in the cup car, right? You want to break way back there. The IndyCars go so much deeper. I want to ask you about a moment earlier today you got to share with Dale Jarrett and all the winners here at Indianapolis. I mean, how cool was that moment, taking that photo at the start-finish line right at the yard of bricks with all the winners at Indianapolis? It was really amazing. I, I received a text that had two names on it. I thought, oh, that'd be a cool photo. Uh, went out there, and there had to be 15 or 20 different drivers that were there. So really appreciate everybody making the effort. And Doug Bowles coming up with the idea. And it, yep. as you know, it was really cool standing out there. Yeah, one of the coolest things I've ever done in, in my professional career. Uh, I have to put it right near the top uh, of things to happen. To just see there, look around, the Indy 500 winners, the Brickyard 400 winners, uh, everybody that, that had won a race here, just to get together for a photo there. And, and I mean, just the history that as you so looked much. around there was amazing. I want to ask you for the NASCAR fans who are tuning in right now to catch the Xfinity Series race, talk to them about how much fun you're having in the IndyCar. I mean, last week at Iowa was a terrific example. You almost finished on the podium <laughs> in that race. You were staring down third place on those final few laps. You know, it, I've learned here that it is more fun to run better. Um, so <laughs> yes. last weekend was That's a lot more Jimmy, fun. Though. It doesn't matter. Yeah. But I, I really have had a great time driving these cars. and. Um, you know, I watched many come to NASCAR from open wheel and watched their struggles, befriended many, spent a lot of time with Dario Franchitti when he came over. Um, and now to go the other direction, I have such a better appreciation uh, for the challenges they had and, and just how, how different these forms of racing are. So, Jimmy, let's just have a little fun here, okay? You know you know some of the NASCAR guys that are competing in the series today. Who out of there stands out to you that might be a great candidate that would have success in IndyCar? Oh. You know the challenges that it takes to get those cars around the racetrack. Who's a driver that pops in your mind and you think, man, that guy would probably do pretty well? AJ Allmendinger? Really? Well, yeah. <laughs> he's a given. <laughs> no he's fair. Okay. Someone uh, I'm not going to hedge your feet on this one. <laughs> um, no, I, 
I honestly think it's going to take somebody young. It would take somebody young that would have to dedicate three to four years to come and do it. Um, obviously, watching Larson in, uh, in the success he's had on road courses, I'd also put Chase Elliott in that category. Uh, but the road course discipline is, is so different in these cars. Um, it's got to be somebody young and somebody that's really good on road courses. Nice. By the way, if you want to win, just a little tip. Alexander Rossi was on NASCAR America Motor Mouse yeah, on Wednesday man. on Peacock. Oh, that's so it? Yeah. Maybe that's yeah. the ticket to win. I don't know. I'm just saying. We know. gave him a few tips. <laughs> yeah, obviously. That's what are you guys doing uh, next week? And, yeah, and we'll yeah, have, yeah, we're open on Perfect. Wednesday. Come yeah. on, you can join us. By the way, how, how good is this timing? Here come the Xfinity Series cars right behind us. They're going to grid up right now as these cars come out. We're going to go to Kevin Lee, who's caught up with another driver post-race. Well, look at all these championships. You got seven time there. I got six time, who's still got a chance at number seven, starting from 20th today, finishing where you do an eighth. Is that about the best that you could reasonably hope for? Yeah, I think with how many times we run on this track now and how close the competition is, you know, we, we shouldn't have had the fumble that we did in, in qualifying because, you know, starting 20th is, makes it almost impossible. But uh, good day for the team. You know, it's definitely a tough track, I think, for us in general. Uh, but, you know, the PNC, PNC Bank, you know, number nine is still hard in the championship here. Only 38 points back. We've got a good string of tracks coming up for us. So looking forward to that, man. It's kind of an interesting uh, sound in the back kind of our conversation we're not used to. You be paying attention a little bit? What's going on? Uh, looking forward to it. You know, I might uh, sit back, have a bit of a beer and watch this race. I know last year was very entertaining. Uh, but I love this, you know, format that we have with Cup and and Xfinity, and then obviously with uh, you know the ATT and Car Series. So hopefully we see that uh, more out throughout the year. Thanks, Scott. Over to Dylan. And his teammate Marcus Erickson comes from the back to finish 11th today. So you said your goal was a top 10, almost got there, but 25th to 11th, not bad. How would you kind of evaluate the day that you had with, with how it started? Yeah, I think it was a good day for us. It was uh, obviously damage limitation from uh, after what happened yesterday. And uh, like you said, a top 10 was our goal. We almost got there. I think we would have got there without that yellow because the yellow was so badly timed for us. We had done that long first stint on the blacks and that put us in a really good spot for the rest of the race. And we were just sort of starting to get the advantage of having, you know, new reds and being able to go shorter on the rest of the race when that yellow came and neutralized the whole race. So a bit frustrated about that because I think we could have maybe had a top seven or top eight without it. but. Still P11 is a good uh, good result from where we started. You go to Nashville next week, place you won at last year, of course. You're on the offense now. Points lead is now, or your points deficit, I should say, is now eight points. So how does the approach change now moving forward? Uh, it does, doesn't really change, to be honest. Uh, of course, I would have liked to keep the lead, but after what happened yesterday, to be only nine or eight or whatever back from, from Will is it's a good spot. And we go, like I said, to Nashville where we won last year, so we know we're going to be strong there. And I'm really excited about that. And we're still in the mix. So we need to maximize every weekend now. And if we do that, I think we have a good shot to, to win this thing in Laguna. They're definitely still in the hunt, still with a shot. And going back to a good place for him, Marcus Erickson finishes 11th today at Indy. 